Well, it's been an amazing couple of weeks, uh, hours, apparently, after Donald Trump was released from the hospital for his COVID-19 infection. He was down in Florida pumping out a lot of energy at a rally. He's been doing two or three of these events a day. Joe Biden's calling a lid at 9.30 in the morning. Donald Trump is doing four events a day. And everybody's seeing this um, these rallies, and everybody knows about this enthusiasm gap. We've talked about it several times here. But there's an interesting article, as we say, we're a week away from the election uh, in the Washington Examiner, and it's called The Big Trump Rallies That You Don't See. And uh, hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. And uh, this is your right angle on the on the sort of underground uh, phenomenon that we're seeing. And I'm seeing it everywhere. But just to go to the um, article for a second, uh, not too long ago, a couple days ago, or there were um, there was a rally in Washington, Pennsylvania, and it wasn't a Donald Trump rally because Donald Trump wasn't going to be there. He had no plans to be there. And it was just announced by local Trump supporters on Facebook. And they had a Trump train of cars and they had 2000 cars. When Joe Biden has a rally, uh, a car rally, he gets 20 or 30 rallies at an event announced event. We just saw Kamala Harris having an event with 10 people in attendance, 2,000 people uh, in a Trump train just for the fun of it. Uh, Steve, let me start with you. Um, it's not just this one event. I'm seeing Trump rallies everywhere. I, and, I, and I've been amazed. I, I really have. I've been looking at this going, my, the guts of these people. They're, they're going right through, they're going through the bluest neighborhoods in the country. And we remember um, seeing video of a of a Biden rally where he had five or six people in cars and across the street there were like you know there were like 40, 50 people at a Trump rally shouting him down. Um, I love that. I think we ran that clip on Right Angle a week or two ago. I think we did. Yeah, yeah. and and you said something earlier, and it's you know it's I, I really do think this is it. You're gonna believe your polls, or your own lion eyes. This it's not. I'm not. A, I'm not even at the enthusiasm issue anymore because we've covered that a lot, Steve. I'm at the actual point of of the brazenness of it, you know, of just the just the raw kind of like, you know, to hell with you. We're going to we're going to fly these flags and we're going to beep our horns and we're going to go through. all. I've never seen anything like it ever, ever, ever on part but of Republicans. You nailed it, Bill, when you said that people were doing these these non Trump their rallies just for the fun of it. It's fun. Trump is fun. He is fun. He's an entertainer. Now, I will grant you, he's not is his particular style of entertainment is not to everybody's taste, and that's that's fine. You know, everybody is different and all that. But he is an entertainer. He's worked very hard to become an entertainer, and he's gotten very very good at it. And that fun is infectious. You know, when somebody is a leader, their attitude filters down the ranks. You know, Obama was always giving us lectures and telling us what we should and shouldn't be doing and that we were on the wrong side of history and all the rest. And it was a real downer. I spent I spent eight years covering politics, just just having to force myself into the shower to, to get clean and shave in the morning so I could write about this dreary SOB talking us down again. And Trump is the exact opposite of that. You know, Bill, one of the most prescient things I've ever heard anyone say was said by you. And it was right after the 2012 election in which so many of us, including me, had put our trust and our faith in Mitt Romney, who then delivered so poorly that the only two states he peeled off of Obama from 2008 were Indiana and North Carolina that Obama should never have won in the first place in 2008, except it was such a over the top year for him. Um, but what you said then was, I don't know who the next president is going to be, but I know they're going to be a celebrity. Boom. You just absolutely nailed it with that one. And and it's it's kind of fun having a celebrity president with the world's hottest first lady. I like it. It's a big improvement. It's a huge improvement. Um, you know, I almost feel sorry for the folks at, at CNN. You know, they helped make Trump. They were covering his 2015 and 2016 rallies during the Republican primary, giving him millions and millions of dollars of free coverage that he could never have bought himself, even out of his own, even out of his own significant wealth. Just the kind of coverage you cannot buy. They were just airing these things. Going, yeah. We're going to make this guy the GOP nominee and he's going to go down in flames. And then, of course, on November 9, everybody at CNN woke up with a hangover and said, oh, he won. And the thing is, Bill, now these rallies, they're still going on. They're probably bigger than ever. You don't even the fact they've gotten so big, you don't even need Trump there to have the Trump to have a, rally. To have a huge rally by Biden standards. Exactly. 
And these CNN people have to, and not just CNN, but everybody else in the mainstream media, as I like to call it, the, uh, I used to call it the Democrat media complex. Now I just call it the infotainment industry because they're, they're not about the news anymore. But now they have to pretend like none of this stuff, all of this stuff that they hyped in 2015 to get Trump the nomination, they have to pretend that none of it exists anymore. And it's just one more nail in their own coffin. The only thing I can't figure out is how they keep pounding those nails in themselves from inside the coffin. <laughs> they have pliers and they pull them down. Um, the, um, you know, you make a great point about fun, Steve, because, uh, the whole year has been kind of a blur and an, an ugly one, too. But I remember, OK, Trump's first debate performance, I thought was just the worst I've ever seen him by far. And then next thing you know, COVID-19 and then the Sanford rally, which was, I recall, was the first of the big rallies after he got sick and watching him in Sanford. This is just I mean, he's like two days out of the hospital yeah. and he was roaming around having so much fun. And the second I saw him back in form, I thought he must have been dreadfully ill on that first debate. I bet he was yeah. really, really sick on that on that yeah. first debate. Uh, Scott, anecdotal evidence is is uh, anecdotal. But when you put enough of it together, you begin to determine some big trends. Um, I was getting my hair cut the other day, as I do every few hours. And um, and uh, the uh, hairstylist of mine is a, is a Trump supporter. The two uh, gay men that own her uh, salon here in uh, Los Angeles are Trump supporters. And she told me that she has gone several times down to Beverly Hills at a, at a little park on, uh, I think it's on Santa Monica Boulevard. I've spoken there myself. And every weekend now, there are Trump people there with huge signs and they're waving and screaming. They're in Beverly Hills. That's not the point, although it's part of the point. Just that raw, plain enthusiasm overcoming the, the social proof and the and the you know all of that. But the, the thing I took most away from it was um, was her um, just I must have asked her three times about this is that the cars that were going by on the street were honking in support. They, they saw one person who gave them the bird the whole day and they smiled and waved at him. But, but all of the cars that were going by on Santa Monica Boulevard in Beverly Hills were beeping in support. And I don't know, I, I just really feel that there's this real genuine shift in, in, in a, in a, in a group of people who have so have been so long so despised to keep in their heads down and kind of you know oh, I'm not really a racist and oh, I'm gonna, just like it's it's over now it's like it's out in the open they're waving flags and they're and they're beeping horns they're doing it in the bluest areas in the country Scott and that's telling me something what's it telling you so as this episode started I did a quick search on my little tablet about uh, car rallies for Trump and uh, the top ten headlines that came up all involved uh, some sort of fracas at a car rally for Trump. Somebody threw a punch, uh, you know, somebody may have fired off a shot or whatever. And so every story was really about violence at car rallies for Trump and, and not actually about the car rally itself, which is why you probably haven't heard as much about this as you, as you think, uh, as you might have expected to hear. Let me read the, the lead of a story, and this is from uh, WABI Channel 5, and I think this is in New York. Skirmishes, that's the first line, of course, for, uh, first word. Skirmishes broke out between supporters and opponents of President Donald Trump. Okay, so that's the lead, right? What was happening? It was a motorcade, a convoy of hundreds of cars driving from Coney Island slowly through Manhattan to Trump Tower and then ending at a little rally in a park in Brooklyn. The rallying group, their cars draped with American flags and Trump 2020 banners, Jews for Trump. That's the group that was doing this. <laughs> so you would think- And they were beaten up by, by Biden supporters. They were, uh, they were attacked by Yeah, Antifa. they were. And nothing so, says anti-fascist like harassing Jews. But that, yeah, people were throwing eggs at him and other kind of violence was happening. But that, to me, that's not the interesting part of this story. The interesting part of this story is that a motorcade of hundreds of cars slowly cruising through New York City under the banner Jews for Trump, Trump 2020, uh, you know, American this flags is it. and stuff. That's the story. That's the unusual thing. Somebody punching somebody in New York is not unusual. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> yeah. Fist punches man or something. I don't know. Uh, the, <laughs> the, um, 
That's exactly right. It's where it's happening and it's how wide it's happening, how many places it's happening. And the article, as I said, is called the Trump rally that you never heard of. Uh, the big Trump rallies that you don't see is actually the, the title of the article. And that's exactly right. There are huge rallies going on everywhere that people don't see. But the point of this is not that there are Trump supporters who are out there brave enough to be doing this, but the support that they're getting from people, once they put up that Trump flag, it gives the people in the cars permission to, to say, all right, I'm actually voting for Trump. I didn't tell anybody because I thought I was the only person in all of Los Angeles. But next thing you know, you've got this, this gigantic wave. Anecdotally, you're hearing people who are saying, look, I live in a really blue neighborhood, uh, and I do. Uh, and and they were talking about all the Obama signs and all the Clinton signs, nothing for Biden. And, and, and it's true. I just, you know, I don't know. I, we've been told for so many months now that this election is essentially over because of Biden's massive lead. And also it's over because so many people have voted um, early. But then I find out some interesting data from, um, I forget which state it was, I want to say. I know in Arizona, the number of people who requested early ballots were even for Republicans and Democrats. And since most Republicans say they're going to vote on election day, the Democrats really almost have to have a two, a two to one advantage in the early voting. And that's certainly not happening. So, you know, the uh, the chicken entrails, uh, coffee grounds and um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, comets uh, uh, business that the three of us are in continues and it will continue for another week. Uh, a week from now is Election Day. If we're lucky. And then and then two or three months from that, we may know who the president <laughs> is. Uh, but if if things if this kind of thing Let's just call them Trump shy, try, shy Trump voters who got a little less shy. If this kind of thing is real and it appears to be real, then we may see a, a real, real event on this election day. Trump says his enthusiasm is higher than it was in 2016. I think that's I think that's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, elections go to the people that show up to vote. Period. Uh, young people are not excited about this election. They don't like Trump. They. They vote Democrat, but they're not excited about this election, so they're not going to show up. I don't know. The thing that concerns me the most is that it is entirely possible that Trump might win so big that the left will simply absolutely refuse to believe that it ever happened. But screw that nasty little minority. Anyway, um, that'll do it for this edition of Right Angle, made possible by the members here at BillWhittle.com. Uh, it's been a great year. Uh, this is our last show prior to the election. And um, do not take anything for granted. Get out there on Election Day. Bring everybody you possibly can. Uh, and I think this is going to be I – I'll tell you how I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the election of the president of the United States as a referendum on whether or not the American people want to see rioting in the streets and their buildings burned down. If the answer is yes, then we are in very serious trouble. And if the answer is no, then there's still hope for saving the whole kit and caboodle. And that's certainly the place I'd like to be. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next week um, on Right Angle and um, hang in there and, and get out there and vote. <laughs>